So, hello everyone. I'm very happy that you are all here and decided to dedicate your time to learn something new. And this talk is called Introduction to SolidJS or Gentle Introduction to SolidJS because I've decided to make it as beginner friendly as possible. And with this talk, I just want to share with you why exactly did I did I find it find SolidJS so fascinating and why I dedicate uh, my free time to just learn it and dive more into the topic. But before we dive into it, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Kaitan Świątek. I am front-end developer here, of course, in SoftServe. I'm from Wrocław, Poland. And if, you're, if you are interested, you can find my work on either Twitter at KaitanSW or on my blog Kaitan.dev, where I occasionally write about web development related stuff. So let's go to the main topic, so SolidJS. And for the starters, I'd like to share with you some interesting facts about it. It is a front-end library or framework, however I'd like to call it, made by Brian Carniato. And uh, if you find the topic interesting enough, I really encourage you to check out Ryan's blog posts and his uh, uh, streams on YouTube, because there he shares everything uh, around uh, solid web development, web trends, and performance. From one of friends' blog, I found out that the first commit for SolidJS was made in around 2016. From NPM, I got to know that first public version was released in 2018. And the first version that was considered stable was released 2000, in 2021, so a year ago. So it's not that newish, no, that newish, not that old of a framework. And especially uh, 2021 is important not only because it uh, was a uh, first uh, big stable major release, but also it is a year where when SolidJS has begun getting traction in web community. And it was especially shown in the results of the State of JS 2021 uh, survey, when it had 90% of satisfaction score. And that, me that means it not only beat React, that it's still considered the most popular web framework out there, but also Svelte that has the, had the si highest satisfaction score a year before, so in 2020. And what are exactly the selling points of SolidJS? So how it's different from any other frameworks? Firstly, because it embraces the concept of reactivity fully. So you've probably already know or uh, used of or heard of uh, some uh, tools, libraries, frameworks that use the concept of reactivity, like for example, RxJS or even Svelte or Vue. And in those tools, reactivity models are a little bit different from each other, but the concept of reactivity everywhere is the same, that it is all about uh, management of data that changes over time and the relations between each other. And also SolidJS apps are considered really performant. And this can be seen on a very interesting GitHub repository called JS Framework Benchmark. I'll send the link to you on the chat. And this repository is just a comparison of performance of uh, JavaScript frameworks and libraries. And if we go to the official results page and go to the most up-to-date based on the version of Chrome, we can see that there is a, a lot of results, results for around 100 at 120 libraries and frameworks out there. And those uh, are uh, tested from very computational, computational heavy uh, operations like creating 1,000 rows, replacing rows, selecting, swapping, removing, etc. Uh, and all those results are gathered under one score. Uh, and uh, by it, the, those frameworks and libraries are ranked. So you can see that SolidJS is in here in uh, somewhere around 10th place of the entire ranking with score of 1.09. And there are a couple of libraries out there that had a better score, like some tools uh, uh, based on WebAssembly or even vanilla, vanilla JS. 
But just to get in perspective, let's see how the more, more popular solutions out there are ranked in this. For example, Svelte is in around one third of the ranking. You can see it by just uh, position of my horizontal scroll bar here, something around one third of the ranking, score 1.25. And for example, React, there are a couple of variations of React here, but let's use just React with hooks. It's somewhere around two thirds of the ranking with score of 1.84. So coming back to uh, presentation and coming back to the performance, uh, you can also say that uh, solid apps are performant because all applications are built at, on top of VIT. And VIT is a build and development tool that with its features can be compared to Webpack or Rollup but it's, it's also considered very performant in comparison with other solutions. So I thought how to present you the basic concepts of Solid.js solid and I thought I wouldn't uh, just create a boring, uh, boring, boring slides with snippets of code and just explain those concepts to you. But instead I would do that, but uh, uh, during live coding, uh, small but close to real world application. So for that, I've decided to, I've decided to create a small application for that. And this application is just a lock screen. Let's see it boot up. And lock screen, you already know this feature, for example, from your smartphones, for your banking applications. So the idea is to uh, have user type in the four digit passcode. And if it's correct, they see a message that is correct. And if it isn't, they see a message that it's not correct, simple as that. So for the purpose of this presentation, it, the correct passcode is just hard coded to be one, two, three, four. So let's see it. We get the information that the passcode is valid. And if it's not, uh, we get the information that passcode is wrong. So I'll just share with you the link already to the uh, completed uh, completed uh, solution, just to have you play around maybe in the meantime. And myself, I'll just fork this and create a new project. And based on that, we'll just implement it from the beginning. I'll go to the app DSX, which holds a main component for our application and just delete every, everything. Okay, now we can start. So Solid, as uh, any other framework out there, embraces this concept of component to modularize your, your UI and to reuse the pieces of your UI. And the components in Solid are present, represented as a function of <clears throat> some custom properties. And uh, that return uh, our template that should be rendered on the screen. So this is the uh, this is the uh, example of the most basic component out there, which has no uh, properties and returns a text of hello world, which is which can be seen here on the right side. So if we inspect this uh, piece here, we can see that hello world text is uh, rendered in the div element with the ID of root. And this comes from the from the file uh, index HTML, which is like a root uh, HTML of our application. And here you can see the, our div with the ID root. Here our solid application would be rendered at, and the script for loading our solid uh, scripts. So the main TSX is like a main file for our application. And there would, uh, uh, the one thing is done, we run the render function with our main component and provided the element, HTML element there where the, our solid application should be rendered at. So coming back to the, uh, the app.tsx. So uh, with this component, we just return a simple text, but what if you'd like to uh, render a, another HTML element, for example, a div. 
And we saw it, we can use uh, JSX syntax for that. And JSX is an abbreviation for JavaScript and XML. And it is, uh, can be considered an uh, extension to the basic uh, JavaScript syntax that allows us to define HTML elements in, in line with our JavaScript code. So if you'd like to define a diff, let's do it like that. And then if we, if we inspect the code, we can see that inside our root element, a diff with the hello uh, is rendered. Okay, so we have basics of uh, rendering stuff on the screen behind us. So let's go to the go to the fun part and uh, to the reactivity concept of the solid JS. So solid uses uh, reactivity by uh, providing a concept of reactive primitives, and reactive primitives are a way for us to create like reactive data within our solid application. It is used, for example, for data management, but also internally for any DOM updates that are performed that are. Uh, performed by solid. So the most primitive out of all reactive primitives in solid is signal, which is used to create a reactive piece of data that emits some new values over time. So in solid, we can define a signal with a function called create signal. The create signal uh, accept as an argument our initial value for our reactive data. So we would like to for now create a signal that holds our uh, that holds our value of uh, the passcode that we'll be using. So let's just initialize it with an empty string. For I'll be using a string type to hold our passcode. And create signal uh, create signal function returns a tuple of two elements. The first one is a reactive uh, getter function, and the second way is a setter function. So let's use uh, JavaScript destructuring to get out those elements. First one we can call passcode, and the second is set passcode. Okay, so if we now have our signals, how we can render it on our screen? Every dynamic value that we create uh, can be used in our JSX uh, element in uh, by wrapping it in curly braces. So we can do something like that. But we have to remember that passcode is uh, it's not a value, but it's a getter. So we have to invoke it. And now we know that passcode is a functional string. The string is inferred from the initial value that we've here provided. And right now we don't see any difference because the passcode is initialized as, a, as an empty string. So let's just play with the reactivity, play with our code to see how the reactivity works exactly. So for that, I'll just uh, create, uh, for example, a set interval. It isn't like um, connected in any way with our feature, but I would like to just show you some concepts. So let's create a set interval that runs every second. And the callback here would be just setting our passcode. Then we can set our passcode by providing uh, a set passcode function with some argument. And there are two types of arguments we can provide. First is uh, just raw value. So we can do something like this and just, for example, concatenate with uh, one. So we can see that every time, every, with every second, there's an initial one concatenated to our previous string. And the second way we can use our set passcode function is by providing it a setter, setter callback, you can say. So it's a function that, hold, that holds our, that uses our current value of uh, passcode. And you can see that the P parameter is already inferred to be string. And this function returns a new, uh, new stage, new value. And this, this also works, as you can see. Uh, okay, so we have our, we have our... Uh... Okay, Dan, sorry. Uh, we yes. have one question uh, in our chat. 
Uh, I can read. Uh, do you work with SolidJS on a daily basis or it is something on the side? Uh, from uh, a, a lot of time I've spent in Solid, I wish I do because it's really cool for me, uh, but I've, I don't. I, on a daily basis, I work with React. So, uh, like I said, it's not a mm, not not newish, not oldish uh, kind kind of technology. But I guess there isn't much uh, like job opportunities with Solid yet. Great, thank you. Okay, so coming back to it, uh, so we have way to create our signals. So the way for us to emit new reactive values. So uh, as you may already know from other reactive systems, there, there should be also a way to create our reactions or run some effects on every value that is uh, emitted with our signal. And in fact, there is. It is a second most important primitive in solid, and it's called create effect. Create effect. And it accepts a callback uh, function with the effect that is run every time the reactive uh, the reactive value is emitted. And you may ask how exactly create effect knows uh, to which exactly signals should be uh, should be subscribed to. And I can say that create effect is smart enough to just uh, found out find it it by by itself by just uh, using the signals uh, by ad identifying signals that are used within its definition. So if we, for example, use console log and do passcode, uh, create effect is then smart enough to just identify passcode and to run the entire effect every time the new passcode value is emitted. So if we go to the console and we run the application, we can see that console log is run every time the new value is, is acquired. OK. So I think we don't need this anymore. Let's just comment this out because it's not uh, useful for our purpose. And right now, we can just go to the part when we create our UI for our application. <clears throat> and there is a couple of ways you can approach it. For example, we can create a, what we'd like, what I'd like to start with is to create another div, like a container div for our buttons. And yeah, I know that nesting multiple layers of divs are considered uh, often a, a bad practice, but just bear with me uh, for the purpose of this uh, presentation. And within its div, we can create our buttons with just one and just copy it eight times and we have our UI. But we are all smart programmers here, uh, smart developers, and we can just uh, automate it. It'll just generate our numbers and uh, do something with it. So for that, let's start with generating array of our numbers from one to nine and find a way to parse those, uh, to map those into our button, button elements. So for that, I've created a utility function called range that generates an array of numbers from a given number to a given number. And let's do it like that. And the range implementation doesn't matter here. It's just a first implementation that can be found on the Stack Overflow or by just Googling the idea. Let's just focus on the solid stuff. The numbers here are generated uh, and are uh, this array contains numbers from one to nine. And uh, here's the way we can uh, map those elements uh, to our buttons. So one way to do that is to use curly braces again and to uh, use our numbers and map those to button elements. So every number should be mapped to button. And as a text inside of the button should be the number. So if we if we uh, refresh, we can see that we already have all the buttons we need. And this is one valid way to do that in solid. 
The other way you can, we can do that is something uh, that is provided by Solid. And uh, it is something that can be uh, used for uh, like a better and uh, tidier control flow in your template. So uh, Solid provide, provides a component that is called for. And this is something like you can consider a for loop inside of your template. So for accepts a uh, prop called each, and there we provide our variable, in this case numbers. And as a child, it uh, accepts the mapping function. So it's the same function as it was before. So mapping from number to a button element. And inside of it, we have our number. And if we, if we refresh, yeah, this is, the, this is the same result. Okay, so we have our buttons and I'll just uh, won't hide the fact that I've cre created this uh, repository beforehand. So there are some useful CSS classes here. So we won't bother with creating those on ourselves to focus on important stuff. So let's just use something that I've created beforehand to just style our buttons in a better way. Okay, so we have our uh, our piece where we render our passcode. Uh, we have our buttons, but those button does not uh, don't do much right now. So to for to for us to update our passcode every time user clicks a button, we have to add uh, a on click handler for our buttons. So to do that, we have to go to our button element and use the on click handler as a property and it accepts a function that should be run every time the event is sent so this function would be run every time user clicks a given button so this function would uh, should update our passcode accordingly so let's set our passcode and use the uh, setter callback and uh, return a current uh, current uh, passcode and concatenate it with a uh, number of the button that was just clicked. And now if we click it or click around, our passcode is happily updated. Okay. And I think the only thing that is left for us is to provide users with some messages. If the if the passcode is correct or not. Uh, first thing that can come to, my, come to mind is to just do it in line, do the validation in line. So let's just uh, hard code it for the testing purposes. And if the passcode is equal to one, two, three, four, we just hard code that for the sake of this uh, presentation. Uh, let's just say the passcode is valid but uh, if the conditional is wrong and here i'm using the ternary operator to just create inline conditional uh, the passcode is wrong and it works okay because it works for the situation where the passcode is valid. So we provided passcode one, two, three, four. So they, we have a valid information. But in the meantime, we have the information that the passcode is wrong. And this is considered a bad user experience. You probably already see a bad user experiences in the all kind of uh, web forms where uh, you are told that uh, the information that you've provided are wrong before you even started typing anything. So you can see that those this passcode status is not like a binary thing. It's not just success. It's and it's not just uh, fail. And we can we should handle the like in between state. We can do it um, in a different uh, ways. For example. Uh, we can just expand our condition turner uh, operator here to do something like this. When the passcode length is less than four, do something, something else. But you can already see that this logic here becomes 
complex, convoluted, and hard to read. So I think the good idea is to extract this state as a separate signal, as separate by part of our uh, component state. So let's uh, delete it for now. And again, we can, okay, uh, first let's create a TypeScript type for our uh, status. Pass code status. Let's call the first state like initial, for example, and there is a success case and for example, fail case. And again, there is a couple of approaches we can use here. For example, we can create another signal with the create signal function and use create effect to react to every new passcode that is coming and set our passcode status accordingly. But uh, I can say that we can do, th this is a valid approach, because, but we can do, we can, we can be smarter than that. We can create a new signal uh, called, uh, the idea is called derived signal. And this means that we can create signals that are derived from already existing signals. And this is the idea that often comes from some state management uh, libraries for the like a good practice of state management or even databases that uh, you shouldn't hold a piece of the state that can be computed from other pieces. For example, you don't have to hold the entire full name of your user. If you already have a name and surname of your user, you can, you can just concatenate those strings every anytime. So to create our uh, drive signal, we can create a passcode status and declare it to be an accessor of passcode status. And like any other signal, it is a function that returns some reactive value. So in this case, let's extract value of our passcode that would be used. And here let's uh, create our, val our validation logic. So here, if passcode is, uh, length of the passcode is smaller than four, let's return uh, init, uh, status. And in any other case, let's return a new condition. This time I'll use the ternary operator. If p is equal to one, two, three, four, uh, let's return success. And otherwise, let's return fail. And okay, we have our derived signal. And uh, whenever a new value of our passcode will be emitted, also the new passcode uh, status would be also emitted. So uh, we can use our passcode status in our templates. For example, uh, let's use another way to uh, conditionally render something on the screen. So if a passcode status is in it, let's use the end operator to provide some value. And let's wrap it in a paragraph and say that enter the passcode. Just an initial value for our for our uh, component. Okay, and so this is one way you can use it with using the end operator. So uh, the end operator works like that: uh, that if all the conditions from all sides of the end are true or truthy. Uh, the last value is shown. So in this case, if this condition is true, we return the, uh, the paragraph element. But if one of the conditions are uh, falsy, uh, the last falsy value is uh, returned. So if this is false, uh, the whole condition returns false, but the uh, false is uh, considered an empty value by solid compiler, so it renders nothing. Okay, this is the one uh, idea of how we can uh, of how we can uh, conditionally re render something on the screen. But uh, there comes another way we can do that with another control flow component from the solid, and this one is called show. And show accepts prop called when that holds our condition. 
In this case, that would be another condition based of the passcode status. And for example, let's, the let's use the success. And as a child, let's provide another paragraph with uh, the information that the pass code is valid. And let's quickly just add another CSS class that I've created uh, beforehand. And let's just copy the, uh, the show component and uh, use it uh, to access the, to handle the failure case. The passcode is wrong. And also the class should be another thing. Okay. So if we enter our passcode, if, if this is valid, we get the information that the passcode is valid. If it's wrong, we get the information that the passcode is wrong. Everything is great. And uh, the only thing that's left for us is to fix one small bug. So user is just allowed to write infinitely our passcode. So we'd like to uh, make user uh, stop writing any passcodes. So, and we can approach it in a different ways how we would like to do that. We can either disable all the buttons or just uh, just hide all the buttons. In the case when uh, uh, the passcode status is either success or fail. And let's just mm, remove every button whenever user stops uh, uh, provided the four digit passcode. And let's uh, do that by again using our show component but to uh, wrap our for in the show component. So show, uh, so the entire, uh, so all the buttons should be rendered uh, only when the passcode status is in it. Okay. So every time we now provide a full passcode, our buttons disappear. And also when it's wrong, it also disappears. Okay, cool. So we just implemented the entire feature we wanted. And there is one thing that I wanted to add to, uh, uh, to everything, uh, just to going back to the idea of the performance. Let's just uh, <laughs> delete everything that's here, or just comment it out. Uh, let's imagine we have the another div, yeah, don't hate me for divs. Uh, let's have the div here and let's have another div here just for the uh, testing purposes. I would like to show you some concept. Okay. Uh, I would like to go back to the idea of the performance of Solid and how it's different from the other frameworks. And it's different because in the solid component, the function that is a solid component runs only once. It runs only at the beginning of like creating our application and doesn't run any uh, any time else. So it doesn't run with every render because there aren't any like render cycles. And if we, for example, have a, an old DOM updates, are just uh, based of the reactive values that we've created. So uh, those updates are really granular because uh, the compiler is smart to know which HTML elements use the reactive signals. So if the signal like our passcode changes, only this element is updated, not the whole element, not the entire component, but only this one element which it really contributes to the idea of really uh, performant DOM updates. Okay, so this is the idea I wanted to share. And coming back to presentation, I've created those boring slides that, that, that I've been mentioning, but just as a, uh, just for you to um, just go look on those, on those idea that, the ideas that we've just mentioned. So components and JSX, reactive primitives, uh, like create signal and create effect, derived signals. Also at the beginning, I thought that I'll be introducing you to another 
uh, another concept of create resource. But I see that already I have took more time with it than I was hoping to. So um, and this, I, felt, I thought this is already too much for you. So I decided to just place it in the, in the slide. But the create resource is, is really uh, helpful if you, are go, if you are doing async calls in your uh, component, for example, fetching some data via API. And you can think of create resource as a way to convert async calls to plain uh, signals. So it's really great. And there is also a component from co for control flow, like a show component, for component, and there is also a switch component. And there, here is some further reading for you if you are interested. For example, uh, there is an official, official tutorial for SolidJS, which basically walks you through every, um, every uh, basic concept of the component with the explanations and also interactive playgrounds to, to solve and play with. There's also a video called SolidJS in 100 seconds on YouTube, which is a really great introduction for really busy developers. There is also a five ways SolidJS differs from other JS frameworks article created by Ryan, a Solid's author, and a more detailed uh, article called a hands-on introduction to fine-grained reactivity, also by Ryan. And this is it. Thank you very much again for listening to me and for uh, joining and for uh, your attendance. And here you have the, on the right the QR code for the application. Over, I just uh, sent it on the chat, but here's the future reference. And I would like to also share with you just the slides themselves on the chat if you'd like to have a look. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you too. Uh, maybe someone have questions? I have a question. Uh, would it be possible to uh, use solid components uh, mixed in with some other frameworks like inside the React uh, project? Uh, like it's not... Uh possible to do that. It, I have a, light, a couple of light, bulb, light bulbs here so, here. so first I can tell you is that um, I didn't want to mention React or any other framework or, on purpose because I heard a lot about comparisons between the frameworks that the like Solid and uh, React because the similarities of API and I know where this question comes from. And there are also uh, smart people out there that, I already, that are already working on a solution for that. There's a repository, I think it's called Solid Code, Code Gen or something like that. You, I have to check it out how it's called exactly, but it's like a tool that would uh, help you with any migration between React and Solid. So it's like that. And also, Another thing that comes to my mind is to, one way we can work with this is by using web components because SolidJS is uh, really good at uh, doing web component stuff. And also with the uh, framework uh, called Astro, which, which is really like um, framework agnostic. You can write your components in any language you have and you want to and mix those together. But Astro, I think it's, really um, limited to just doing static sites. So yeah, those are the, the kind of ideas that I got yeah, I was your question. I thinking of migration. I was thinking, you know, like if you exported a solid uh, component, like as a standalone, couldn't you import it uh, into like any project? Uh, I didn't heard of any ideas about uh, from that. Uh, so I don't really know, sorry. Uh, one, one, one more question. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so, uh, for example, for Angular, we have uh, different libraries like Material, like PrimeNG, and so on. Do we have the same for the SolidJS? Because it's very important to use third party libraries in the project. 
Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the ecosystem is still small compared to more uh, popular uh, solutions like uh, Angular, React, and so on. But there are some already uh, libraries for components, like there is uh, Hope, U Hope UI, uh, if I remember co correctly. There, are, with each like month, there are lots of more libraries that handle like typical situations the developers uh, would like to be handled so like component libraries and any other related stuff so yeah to answer your questions really quickly there are some component libraries for solidjs and i think one of those i don't know if it's if it's not even hope ui it's like a clone of material ui or something like that i don't know if it, that's the one but uh one of those is something like that okay thanks uh, what is the age of this li library of this framework age uh, how, yeah yeah how many years it's, it's on the market uh so like the first uh, that the ryan so out the author has started working on that it was 2016 it was publicly uh released uh, the first version was publicly released in 2018 but the first stable version, like 1.0, it was released just last year. Okay, thank you. And we have one more question in chat. Is it production ready or still just something nice to play with? I think that's all, it all depends. It depends on your, I, I think if, it, if you'd ask, uh, the authors of the of the framework, they would 100% say it's production ready. I think they are smart enough to not release something that it's not production ready and call it like stable and create just 1.0 uh, release uh, that was uh, last year. And right now we have like 1.4.2 version. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if you consider uh, if you consider a library not production ready because it's, it has a small ecosystem, that's totally fine. Everyone has different like requirements. But yeah, I agree that uh, I think if I, if I were to point the one disadvantage to the SolidJS, it's small ecosystem, but I can say that it's really going in the a good direction because I keep in touch with uh, everything that's going on on the official Discord channel, and there's there are a lot of uh, ideas to create libraries, and also Solid uh, team had cre created a hackathon uh, a couple of months ago, where uh, the, there were a lot of submissions with the new ideas and new libraries, and even myself, I've created a form library for Solid because of that. Yes, ASIC and concurrent rendering. Yeah, the, uh, the Ryan and the creators of Solid have even uh, copied some features from, from uh, React. So if you look at the tutorial, you, you find yourself uh, information about suspense components, suspense list, and things like that. And also, a create resource is a great uh, primitive because it's really similar to React query when it comes to API and the functionality. Okay, if there are no more questions, or Tomas, you want to say something? Is there a difference in performance? Uh of using the uh, vanilla uh, JS versus the new uh, solid components that are provided? Like uh, mm -hmm. or, uh... Yeah, so we can, uh, um, at the beginning, I've shown you a JS, uh, JS framework benchmark, and there you can see uh, differences in, in performances between like, all different libraries and frameworks. So at the beginning, there are so like a peak of performances. There are of course vanilla JS and also some tools that are based on the web assembly. Sorry, sorry. I I meant within the, the solid project. You know, like when you have a map, 
map mm -hmm. versus uh, four? Like, is there a difference? Uh... Oh, uh, okay. Um, I won't lie. I don't know. I don't know. But I, if I were to, uh, if I were to just guess, uh, I think the creators of Solid wouldn't just create a four component if they if it was any more less or any more worse than any other solutions. So I don't have a clear answer on that. Thanks. 